Now back to Ryan and Christian on ESPN 1240 and online at WBBW.com. Ryan and Alice brought to you by Donald Ford Lincoln. You can view the inventory online at Donald.com. DonaldSalem.com. Thank you. You're welcome. Right now we're going to be joined by James Dotson of the 360 Sports Network as he gets us set up for our fantasy lineups on this Thanksgiving week. Hey, James, how are you? Hey, doing well, guys. Happy almost turkey day. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving Eve to you, too. So, all right, I have a question regarding, all right, Willis McGahee just came down, news came down today, running back for Denver. He's out for the season. Well, out for the regular season. He may come back in the regular season, I mean, in the, in the playoffs. But, he won't be helping out anybody's fantasy team. So are there any good running backs in the waiver wire that possibly I could pick up to replace McGahee? Oh, uh, there are lots of good guys, not only running backs, but players as a whole. Honestly, this might be one of the best waiver wire weeks um, that you have had all year in terms of picking up players and setting yourself up for playoffs. So even if you think you're comfortable with your team, take a look at some of these players. The first guy to start with is McGahee's backup, Ronnie Hillman. Uh, still available in about 70% of leagues. He was available in 1% or was only taken in 1% of leagues before uh, McGahee's injury. Here's the thing. He's the only player besides Willis McGahee to have uh, a double-digit carry game. So he's going to be getting the rock, and he's going to start right away playing Kansas City's uh, bottom five rush defense. So if you don't want to go with Denver, you don't trust a Denver back, Marcel Reese uh, for Oakland still out there in 60% of leagues. He had almost 200 total yards last week, 103 on the ground and another 90 in the air. Um, and then another one, injury prone, uh, you can go with uh, with Jalen Parmele, um, still available in 90% of the league for Jacksonville running back. He's going to be taking over. He had 24 carries, so he's going to get touches uh, for 80 yards last week, uh, taking place of the injured Jones through and um, uh, the injured Rashad Jennings. He's been a very big disappointment this year. So lots of running backs out there. You can go for any one of them. Would easily uh, fill your hole that you need. So uh... – all right, I got rid of McGahee, and uh, it turns out it turns out that my last running back slot's going to come down between two guys, either Mikel Lashore or Felix Jones. Both play tomorrow on Thanksgiving. Lashore going up against the uh, the Houston Texans defense. Uh, Felix Jones a little banged up. He's going against the Washington Redskins defense. Out of those two, which one's a better option? Yeah, Felix being a little banged up scares me a little bit, but having trying to play Lashore as a starter against that uh, Houston defense. Uh, you know, Jacksonville did, you know, work the ball well against them. But, again, I just mentioned it, that guy, Parmeal, he had 24 carries, so they were running it, but he only had 80 yards. That's really not great stats. And what also scares me is that you saw um, kind of like Green Bay has done with Randall Cobb putting him in the backfield. Uh, Detroit started doing that a lot with Ryan Broyles. So instead of going for Mikel Lashore in the backfield, they're going with a wide receiver. So I'm going to kind of shy away from that and take my risk at Felix Jones hit the home run, which is very likely not only in the run game but in the pass game against Washington. It doesn't concern you that uh, Jones's knee was a little bit – like he, he, he injured it during the Browns game. He was able to play the rest of the game. But it turns out it's, it's been bothersome for him in practice. You don't think he'll there'll be a, he'll lose some carries to his backups? I mean, he's, he's losing carry, a couple carries already, the goal line carries, but that's not where Felix Jones helps you. Now, if your league is very touchdown heavy – then you need to take the risk on the bigger back of the short. But Felix Jones, I think, is going to get as many carries as he has been. He has been a little bit banged up um, last couple weeks of practice and is still gone. So I don't see it being any more of an issue. But that being said, still, you got to be listening uh, come tomorrow morning as you're preparing your apple pies and starting to roast your turkeys that you need to uh, check and see if there's any new news on Felix Jones. But I expect him to play, and if so, I would pick him over the short. Now, this seems like a daily, I'm, I'm, I beg your pardon, a weekly conundrum for me as far as my starting quarterback. Last week I asked you Andrew Luck or Matt, Matt Stafford. I'm going to ask you again. Andrew Luck going up against Buffalo or Matt Stafford playing this Thanksgiving against uh, Houston? I'd like to say, you know, Stafford could step up against Houston being a, in the spotlight, and the reason I'm actually going to go that route um, Buffalo's run defense is pretty putrid, and I think uh, you, that India is going to really try. They need to work on getting a run game. I see them going heavy to the run this week. Stafford being in the limelight, being on Turkey Day, um, not to mention Houston just got trashed by a backup quarterback in Chad Henney, so um, throwing over 500 yards. So I'm going to go with Stafford in this one. Um, 
mainly because of being in prime time and needing to show the country that, yeah, I am still here, I am still relevant. All right, James, I want to do some basketball. Absolutely. I have Kyrie Irving. He is hurt, as we know. Mm -hmm. I pulled off a small trade to get Ramon Sessions just to kind of get me over that uh, few weeks. How do you feel about that? I think Sessions is a, is a good guy to go with. I mean, we've, we've known about him here for a bit. But he's what I'm looking at when you have some of these players in basketball that, that uh, scare me is how many minutes are they playing? And he's getting a consistent 28, 29 minutes every, day, every game. Uh, he's been double digit, um, double digit points every every week, or I'm sorry, every game, week in, week out. Uh, gets you a few rebounds, few assists. He's a consistent all around player that will help you win multiple categories. I think that's a good move while your uh, while your guy Kyrie's out. Yeah, I was looking at that. Um, just trying to think of some of the other stuff. I I need. I don't know who would be out there because Ellis and I have had this conversation. The NBA talent pool is very slim. Shallow. I mean, <laughs> there's just after maybe the top 40 or so guys, if that, there's nobody. <laughs> there's really just not. Mm -hmm. I, I'm in desperate need of a, uh, a center. I have, I have Greg Monroe, and he's actually the only true center I have. The other couple guys are like forward centers. Trainers. But yeah, I need an actual center. Yeah. I don't know where to go because there's only – there's only a few centers out there. Is there any centers beyond the top ten that I can look at? Well, you want to have a center who's going to get you rebounds, obviously, but who's also going to get you at least some points. I mean, that's sometimes the issue with some of these guys who are seven foot, that, yeah, they'll get you some rebounds, but they aren't going to put it in the hoop. Um, the only guy I see out there in a majority of leagues who I would consider going for uh, would be um, uh, Nikola Bukovic from yeah. – from Orlando. I mean, he's also more of a power forward slash center, but he averages a double double. So you can't really argue with that in terms of who's out there. I mean, he's about your best bet. He's a consistent 31 minutes a game. Um, only, I mean, he's out there in about probably 30, 35 percent of leagues now in most of them. But beyond that, I mean, you got to go right down to like, um, <clears throat> I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to look down the list here to see if there's anybody else I would consider picking up. Maybe you take a risk on Amir Johnson from Toronto, but again, same sort of thing. He doesn't get the the minutes, which things to begin with, and he's not getting double digit points. So beyond those two, you could take a risk with Tristan Thompson, maybe with the injuries that are oh. going around. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean, though. You, like, I knew you were going to say no, and I'm I, I really hated having oh. having to say that. But oh. I'm looking down the list though, and. After Vukovic, there's Tristan Thompson is about the next best guy out there that I see like who's being picked up, meaning that he's available in most leagues, and that's it's not somebody you want to go with. That's why I, I've started to see drafting a lot more depth at the center position seems to be paying off. I mean, I have four or five. Everybody's trying to trade me for him. I'm getting great offers in return, but I mean, hindsight's always twenty twenty. But I tried that this year, and it seems to work out. Like you said, especially at the center position, there's just no talent. All right, Dan, the last thing we were talking about today that is not fantasy-related, but I'm sure you're up on it, the Steelers have a ton of injuries. They're going into Cleveland. You know how I feel about this. What do you uh, think that game's going to look like? Uh, I think it is going to be ugly. Uh, I think that it's going to be a very defensive struggle on both ends. I mean, the Steelers will always bring their defense when their quarterback is hurt. Uh, Cleveland's defense has looked very solid for the most part this year, I think, as long as uh, – as long as the coach isn't calling the plates too often out there. But, no, I, I think that it's going to be a, a, a typical AFC North game. You're going to have a low-scoring game. I'm going to say I actually think that the Browns pull off there. I think the Browns win 15-14 on five field goals. That was uh, actually, the that's score of pretty appropriate, the man. first time they beat the Steelers when they came back year one. 15-14? I believe it was. Huh. Well, um, no, that, that would be appropriate. I just don't see the Browns getting in the end zone, but I don't see the, the Steelers being able to put up enough points because I think the Browns can drive it well enough um, with their with the uh, underneath game, especially with Rich. Rich and I love what they did, giving them the ball in the flat last week. Um, so see what's happening, Ellis? Yeah. All these people are picking yeah. the Browns. I, it, it doesn't look – yeah, it's – This is my nightmare. <laughs> it, it's, I told, I, James, I swear if the Steelers win this game, I'm going to cry. I, I will want Pat Shermer fired – in the third quarter. Oh, and you know things are going bad, like you said, when people are picking the Browns, and you have a Steelers fan talking to you right now who is picking I the know. Browns. 
I don't like that. But yeah, that, that's that's the main thing. Just, I'm going to take it right on the chin. Like, oh, man. Blasted. Oh, I can man. Just, I, I know it's coming. Hey, you, you got it all lined up perfectly. You got a 79-year-old quarterback going against you. You, you got to take advantage. I know. Like I said, if they lose this game, they say great shame should fall on their, their houses. Any given Sunday or Thursday in this regard for half the league, it feels like. But that's what Turkey is all about. Yep, yeah, most right. definitely. All right, James, appreciate the help for our fantasy teams. Uh, before, we, before we let you go, let everybody know what you do out there. Absolutely. We have 360 Sports Network. Uh, you can Google us or go to 360sportsnetwork.com. Love talking fantasy football, answering start sit questions uh, like we do for you guys every week. Uh, also talking anything controversial. So, of course, with Big Ten gaining two members, we're talking about that. Notre Dame's always controversial. We'll be talking about that big time coming up and with the BCS in general. Just anything that is sports related, we love talking about it, especially when it, uh, when it creates controversy and chaos because that's just what we love to talk about, uh, especially with what's wrong with sports. There's way too much of it. Uh, you can get us at uh, 360sportsnetwork.com and following us on Twitter. Uh, the handle is at 3S Network. All right. Thanks a lot, James. We'll talk to you next week. Have a great Thanksgiving and have a safe weekend no as well. Problem. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You too. Happy, happy Thanksgiving, and go Irish. All right. That was James.